What kind of people will be living in the last days before Christ's return? The Bible gives us a clear picture in 2 Timothy 3, 2, 5. In this passage, Paul says, There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. It describes some troubling attitudes and behaviors that will be widespread as that time approaches. First, the Bible says there will be lovers of themselves, people consumed by selfish desires. Selfishness is already so prevalent today, but it's going to increase even more. Just look at our society. Broken families, divorces, conflicts all stem largely from selfishness. Each spouse cares only about their own needs instead of their partner's. Parents put themselves first before their responsibilities to their children. The sad truth is that selfishness lies at the root of most of our world's problems today. Wars, economic troubles, you name it. It all traces back to putting me before everyone else. Even in churches, we see evidence of this selfishness creeping in. Pastors being treated as celebrities, their names praised more than Jesus. Christians embracing a life of pleasure and sin while claiming faith. The Bible says in the last days, this selfish mindset will be multiplied. People will be utterly self-absorbed. Their desires, their comfort, their agenda will be what matters most, not caring how it impacts others. Selfishness and narcissism are rampant and celebrated today. The me-first mentality fuels so much conflict and breakdown of relationships. Marriages crumble from spouses demanding their own way. Parents neglecting or abusing their children to indulge selfish desires. Businesses and leaders exploiting others for personal gain without regard for who gets hurt. In a world of endless social media selfies and personal branding, self-promotion has become an idol. The line between healthy self-care and toxic self-obsession is increasingly blurred. Courtesy, compassion, and consideration for others are seen as weaknesses. The Bible says in the last days, this selfish mindset will be multiplied. People will be utterly self-absorbed. He, their desires, their comfort, their agenda will be what matters most, not caring how it impacts others. The Bible forewarns us of another deeply troubling characteristic that will be prominent in the last days. People will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Even now, our world is plagued by multitudes who recklessly pursue fleeting pleasures while rejecting and dishonoring the one true God. We have to be honest. Sin is pleasurable, at least in the immediate moment. That's a big part of why it ensnares so many, despite the inevitable long-term consequences. Sinful indulgences seduce us with a deceptive illusion of never-ending, escalating highs and thrills. Just look around. You see evidence everywhere of people prioritizing pleasure over their professed faith. Churchgoers skip services to indulge in sports, shopping, social media binges, or other entertainment. Once happy marriages shattered by fornication, adultery, and pornography addictions. Careers, finances, and personal growth stunted by laziness or substance abuse, the lure of fleshly pleasure is undeniably strong. Whether that's sexual sin, materialism, slothfulness, or addictions of any kind, it's so easy to get caught in its seductive snares. The rationalizations start whispering, I deserve this little indulgence or 
No one's getting hurt by my private vices. But God's word sternly warns against falling into idolatry by loving the sinful pleasures of this fallen world system more than loving Him. Prioritizing temporary gratifications of the flesh over the eternal satisfaction found only in Christ is spiritual adultery. Tragically, this dynamic of selling out one's devotion to God for the cheap, counterfeit thrills offered by sin will reach staggering levels in the last days before Christ returns. Vast multitudes abandoning any pretense of godliness to ravenously chase after worldly pleasures and delights like animals consumed by their basest impulses. It won't even be a matter of occasionally skipping church activities. Rejecting God and rejecting His moral boundaries will be their entire lifestyle. The idolatrous worship of self-gratification through any and every illicit pleasure available will constitute their sole pursuit and passion in life. This is the sobering reality the Bible is warning about, a final godless generation so enslaved to fleshly indulgences that the very concept of honoring or obeying God will be unthinkable to them. An unprecedented pandemic of sin-obsessed, pleasure-drunken idolaters. Finally, one of the most insidious characteristics of the last days is that many will have a form of godliness but denying its power. Outwardly, they'll maintain some appearances of faith or religious piety, but inwardly, they flatly reject and rebel against God's transforming power operating in their lives. These are the phonies, the spiritual impostors who talk an eloquent game about truth while unrepentantly living in sin behind closed doors. Perhaps even prominent leaders in churches or ministries who are ultimately hollow shams, devoid of authentic spiritual substance. On Sundays, they preach lofty sermons about holiness, righteousness, and surrender to Christ. But from Monday through Saturday, their personal lives are marked by unrestrained indulgence in things that grieve and quench the Holy Spirit. They've mastered the lingo and rhetoric of belief, but their lifestyles bear no credible fruit matching their polished performances. If you've been a believer for any length of time, you've likely encountered these kinds of spiritual hypocrites before, people putting on grand outward shows of spirituality and virtue, when in reality they care little for genuinely following and obeying Christ behind the facade. Robotically, going through religious routines and rituals while their unrepentant hearts remain far from God. As the world hurtles toward the culmination of the end times, the Bible warns that exponentially more people will profess some hollow form of godliness, perhaps cultural Christianity, general moral beliefs, or a veneer of traditional religion. But in actuality, they completely reject God's power to radically transform them from the inside out into the image of His Son. They'll be content remaining in bondage to their sinful patterns and fleshly impulses, no driving desire to conform to Christ's likeness or pursue His righteousness in every area of their lives. Religious habits, rules, and routines are plenty, but no authentic spiritual fire burning within. It's truly a scary and insidious spiritual deception just an empty outer shell of professed faith with no substantive reality behind it. Counterfeits, masquerading as the real deal, but utterly devoid of the Spirit's life-changing power working in them. This explains why the Bible soberly instructs believers to identify and steer completely clear of these kinds of people promoting spiritual facades. Their counterfeit influence and bad leaven can shipwreck our souls if we unwittingly embrace it. 
Discerning the truth from the lie has never been more vital in these last days. These sobering trends of selfishness, pleasure-seeking, and empty religious facades will only intensify in the times ahead. The Bible's prophetic warnings about the people of the last days should shake us out of any spiritual complacency. That's why, as followers of Jesus Christ, we cannot afford to be casual or complacent in our faith walks. We must take the active, ardent pursuit of holiness seriously every single day, not just on Sundays. If we're not proactively, fervently chasing after God with everything we've got, it becomes terribly easy to get swept up and deceived by these ungodly last days attitudes and behaviors the Bible warns about, loving ourselves over loving God and loving others, choosing temporary sinful fleshly pleasures over eternal spiritual joys, settling for a shallowly outward Christian masquerade rather than an inwardly transformed life. The key to enduring faithfully until the end is to keep your spiritual passion for Jesus Christ burning blazing hot each and every day. Love Him wholeheartedly as your magnificent obsession. Stay intimately connected to the source of His resurrection power, presence, and provision continually and actively. When you cherish that pure, fiery intimacy with God as your highest priority above all else, you won't be fooled into following after the countless hollow human philosophies, deceptive spiritual paths, or corrupt mindsets that are arising. Yes, we are living in perilous, darkening times in many ways. The sinister cultural influences and anti-Christ forces the Bible describes will only continue accelerating as we get closer to the end. But you don't have to be intimidated or overwhelmed. And you certainly don't have to get swept away by them. Stay rooted deeply in God's truth. Obey Him wholeheartedly, no compromises, and vigilantly protect and nurture the blazing fire of your first love for Christ daily. Fan that flame through passionate prayer, devouring scripture, corporate worship, and full yielding to the Holy Spirit. I encourage you, seek Him with everything within you today and every day, Allow His purifying love and transforming power to continually mold and shape you further into the image of His Son. Then you will be able to stand firm, radiant, and unshakable, no matter how corrupt the world becomes in these last days. Let's pray together. God, prepare us for the challenging days ahead. Burn away any compromise, selfishness, or spiritual shallowness in our lives. Ignite an unquenchable passion to seek you above all else. We want to finish strong, faithful to the end. Use us to shine your light brightly in this darkening world. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you were impacted by this message, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell. That way you'll get updated whenever we release new videos, unpacking more biblical truths to strengthen your faith for the times in which we live. God bless you.